What's your favorite scary movie? Check or treat! Hey guys, welcome back to Pop Culture with Pat. So I am so excited today, joined by today's guest. Today I'm talking all things Robbie Ain't Right No More with director Kyle Parrott and star Madeline McGraw. Thank you guys so much for coming on the show today. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Of course. So to, to start things off, Kyle, for those who haven't got a chance to see the film, I know right now it's it's making its rounds with the festivals. Can you just tell viewers a little bit about what what the film is actually about? Well, you know, it's the story of a kid who goes off to war and comes back home to his family, carrying something deeply disturbing back with him and what that does. And for you, Kyle, uh, so I know you've had two tours of duty as a Marine and thank you uh, for your service, by the way. Um, So would you say this is your most personal project to date? Uh, And how long has this been, this idea been in development for you? Um, It's an, uh, it's an idea I've been carrying with me for a long time, probably since, you know, the day I got back, as soon as the experience is dealing with, you know, people back home started. And it's mostly the like funny and awkward moments that I've always wanted to put into a movie. And uh, as time went on, I, uh, you know, really wanted to do a horror film and, you know, thought it'd be a great opportunity to explore some of the darker sides of, of that um, and just put them together into one and, thing and i know you've you've worked on other films in other departments of the filmmaking process was it was it always in your mind that you wanted to direct this project or was there ever were you ever going to go in any other direction maybe someone else do it or where it was personal to you did you want to be the director oh yeah i mean ever since i started in this business uh, a little over 10 years ago i've wanted to you know write and direct my own stuff um and the advantages of working as a technician for so long as you can literally just watch and see how everyone else does it. Uh, it's probably the best kind of film school you can get. And Maddie, for you, so you play the role of Sarah in the film. What attracted you to Robbie Ain't Right No More in the first place and, and the role of uh, Sarah? Well, um, I originally, like, I got the script from Emmy, uh, Kyle's fiance, and she's also the producer and costumer on Robbie and Right No More. She, I've known her since I was six years old. We worked together on my first big show called Outcast. Um, and we've been so close and kept in touch ever since. So she brought the script to me. She was like, Kyle wrote this really great script. There's a role for you in there. And if you're interested, like if you read it, um, please let me know if you're interested or would want to do it. And obviously, I mean, I love Emmy so much. So, uh, but I read the script and I was like, yes, this is so cool. This is, in- this is so interesting. And uh, then when I uh, got it and got to work with Kyle, Kyle's also just so cool. And everyone on it was amazing. So it was overall like such a cool experience. Yeah, and I imagine reading the script too, because I know watching the film, I've seen it twice now. So I imagine reading the script, you're probably hooked hooked right away, just as yeah, I Yeah, it was so interesting. Like I didn't expect some of the stuff that happened in it for sure. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely has some interesting turns, I'll just say for, yeah. <laughs> for people who haven't had the chance to, you know, see it so far. Now, Kyle, why did you decide to go the horror out with Robbie Ain't Right No More? Was that always in the plans or did that kind of evolve as you're working on the project? Um, I think it's the best method to kind of share the like feeling and some of the dread associated with some of the things we're talking about, like more so than any other genre, you know. Like we've seen dramas and, you know, yeah, mostly dramas trying to tell a story and it's just been hit ad nauseum and <clears throat> I've just wanted to do something different. Yeah. I feel like there's so much that you can do with horror. I mean, there's, there's horror dramas like this, there's, you know, horror sci-fi, horror comedies. So there's a lot of different ways that you can take a film in the horror genre. So it, you know, it makes sense that you went in that direction now, Maddie, how were you able to connect with playing uh, the role of Sarah in this film? Well, uh, we got to have dinner like all together, like as a cast, and 
uh, as coworkers and everything before, like we filmed, like I think the night before maybe. Um, so that gave us all a chance to really connect and like talk about our characters. Um, but you know, Sarah, she cares about her brother so much and she knows that something's wrong with him, obviously, but instead of like, I don't know, being rude or ignoring him or forcing something out of him, she wants to help him uh, do what he needs to do to feel like himself again and to just get the like the old Robbie back. And I imagine the uh, so I imagine the dinner that you guys had wasn't anything like the dinner that we had in this film. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> Much <laughs> more happy for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as I say, right, right from the start of this film, uh, you know, you guys, you both do a great job of just, I instantly felt just had this feeling of dread and just felt really uncomfortable, especially when you get the, to that dinner scene. I mean, right. I feel like not not necessarily to the degree that's in this film, but I feel like a lot of people experience this, especially with, uh, you know, the holiday season and stuff coming around, you're going to other family members, uh, houses for, for dinner and things like that. And there's always kind of the awkward small talk and, and things. Yeah. So I'm sure a lot yeah. of people will be able to relate to this in, in some aspect, at least. Yeah. Wow. I thought it was very important to make it a fall winter movie for that reason. <laughs> oh, okay. Perfect. So yeah, it's like great timing for it to, you know, for it to come out. And Maddie, can you also talk about uh, working with Jordan Cal, who plays your older brother, Robbie, in the film? Uh, so I was actually going to ask, did you have any conversations about your characters? But it sounds like you probably did, like, at, at the dinner. Yeah, we did. Um, and uh, he definitely, like, stayed more in character a lot of the time, like, quiet, like, had his headphones in. But um I knew I don't I don't know if I can talk a lot about the, this scene later on in the film, but I definitely did not expect him to do that. Like, I know I read it in the script, but I didn't really get to see them filming that really intense scene. So I didn't know what to expect. And so then when I watched it, I was just I was taken aback. I was like, that is crazy. He killed it. He did such a good job. It was it, it was awesome. <laughs> Oh yeah, great great performances. I mean, from, yeah. from like all, all around. Kyle, what were what were some of the more challenging aspects of putting this together from from start to end? You know, you, you're doing a short film. You don't necessarily have as much time to spend with characters. You know, when you're when you're doing a shorter film, budgetary limits. I guess what were some of the challenges that you faced from start to finish? Um, I think the biggest challenge was making the schedule, uh, hitting that target. Because um, with with Maddie, every actor who's basically under 18 years old, you know, there's just very strict rules on the hours they can work on set. So that automatically puts a, you know, huge restraint on what you can do. And a lot of people in the indie world just think it's crazy to, you know, write a movie uh, that stars a child actor for that reason. <laughs> like, you're insane. I, I can't think of any other actor her age who could have pulled that off. Uh, we were very lucky to get her on this. Uh, yeah. I mean, Maddie, I mean, some of the, you know, your other roles and stuff like that, you've been, you know, killing it with a lot of your recent projects. So I was very excited to, to see you, you know, in this role. Um, this isn't, you know, speaking of that. So this isn't your first time of stepping into the horror genre. What keeps you coming back for, for more? I don't know all the all the scripts that I get for horror they're all so different like nothing you would expect and especially with Robbie and Wright no more I'm pretty sure they were like we didn't use any effects like it was all um there was no practical what's it called? A pra yeah it was all practical right. effects um and I thought I thought that was so again I don't know if I can say what happens at the end so yeah <laughs> but, we won't say anything about know, that yeah <laughs> but I just thought I think all of that is so interesting and especially how you know being on all these sets it's all so different and being on this one everyone like knew each other like they were all friends and I find it really cool how when you make all these connections in the industry you're able to put together something amazing yeah and I imagine it must have been you know cool too just where, where it's a short film you know smaller crew like smaller budget just um might have like a little bit more of like an intimate feeling, you know, because yeah. sometimes where you have these, these big productions, you got so many different things, you know, going on different schedules, trying to, to main that stuff. So 
in a way, I imagine it must feel kind of nice just to kind of have a, a smaller set where, you know, you can like interact with everybody. Yeah. And, you know, because it's so small, but everyone's working so hard. And so by the end, when you feel like you've accomplished something like that and you made something really cool, like we all feel feel like family after. Oh, yeah, I imagine. And so I have to ask you, Kyle, without, you know, going into like any spoilers or anything like that, because definitely want people to experience the film. Are there any plans to possibly turn this into a full length feature down the road? or maybe just explore more of this world in the future? Oh, absolutely. Um, when I was writing the script, I basically you know, had that in mind the whole time, and that's why it ends the way it does. Uh, and thankfully, it's been working on people. They're like, you know, what happens after that? Uh, oh, yeah. I'm not yeah. kidding you guys. When I, <laughs> so when I watched it the first time, it got to the end, and I was just like, wait a second, like, wait. Like what happens at that point? I want to see what yeah. happens next. When my siblings watched it, they were like, "That's it? <laughs> what? That's how it ends? Are, are you are you serious? I want I want to see more." Yeah, that's a dangerous thing to do because I've seen a lot of indie shorts and I've definitely made one or two where the end will just piss people off because <laughs> it was ambiguous and they're like, "Well, what what, what does that uh, mean?" Yeah. And it's great right. too because the set up. Or they just back. leave angry. So you don't want that to happen. You want them to leave, you know, like a nice in between. Questions like good questions. <laughs> yeah. You want them satisfied, but wanting more. But wanting right. more. Yeah. Yeah. That's a yeah. Fun one. <laughs> no, it's definitely, yeah. I mean, it didn't feel like, because it was like, what, I think like 17, 18 minute, you know, runtime. And uh, it, it didn't feel like that at all. Like it, it was, it seemed like it was over within just like a couple minutes. So, okay. I'm very excited to hear that you, you know, you at least like you got plans to maybe tackle more in this world. Uh, so it's, it's one thing to, to shoot a horror film and it's a whole nother thing to, you know, experience just to like watch them as well. Maddie, do you ever get creeped out or scared at all when you're actually shooting some of these projects? Okay, not usually not when I'm shooting them. I mean, sometimes when it's like really dark and we have to film like a really intense scene, there are there are some like creepy aspects, I guess. But more so like even when I'm watching it, even though I know what's going to happen, things still scare me so badly. But, you know, that's how you know it's a great film. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And I know so there's like one scene that I'll just say that you're you're running and it's dark outside. Yeah. I know, like, I can imagine, like, shooting out in the dark, whatever. That might, you know, be kind of creepy. Granted, there's probably, like, a bunch of other people while you're shooting that scene. But I imagine something like that would kind of creep me out if I was, you know, shooting a scene like that. And, I mean, yeah, it was more of, like, they they didn't want me to fall or trip because there were so many rocks. And <laughs> um, we were filming that scene, like, at a barn. So there were horses and there was a bunch of horse poo everywhere. <laughs> So more of just like keeping me safe, if I guess. Yeah, no, I say that 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 makes sense too. But yeah, uh, yeah no, I, I have um, I, I've been around like horses before, so it's definitely something that you'll find find that all over the place. Now, <laughs> you guys, you you've both worked on both full length and short films in your career. How does working on a smaller budget like this challenge you creatively? You know, I, I know we kind of mentioned like less time to shoot limited or no visual effects. Um, so you really have to get creative when it comes to that. How does that kind of challenge you both, you know, compared to working on a, a big production? Well, for me, I guess I'd say because they have so much limited time with me, I need to make sure to definitely give it my best in the first two takes. <laughs> um, so I'd say that was probably the biggest challenge for me. Um, I, you, Kyle. I think it forces you to think outside of the box and just get better out of necessity. So, you know, for instance, like the very first scene in the movie, I, I have pretty much all the camera directions in the script. And, you know, when we got there on the day, I just had to throw it all out the window and, you know, come up with a more efficient way to shoot it, which I think is better than what was in the script, you know, as far as that goes. Uh, and it really sets up the whole feeling of unease and that something's a little off, like right off the bat, which, uh, you know, wasn't in the original plan, uh, you know. So it was one of those happy accidents. <laughs> and then um, <clears throat> for all the action stuff, you know, all the, you know, crazier stuff later in the movie, um, 
that's I wouldn't say that's a spoiler that should get people excited to watch it. Um, <laughs> like we had so little time because she's in every scene. So, you know, I didn't have time on set to like watch a bunch of rehearsals and walk around with the viewfinder, which I think is the best way to do it. But um, <clears throat> so, you know, I had a bunch of time at home on the weeks leading up before this. So I just uh, kind of like mapped out our little set and the Unreal Engine and, you know, moved the camera around and some lights and my little characters and basically boarded that whole scene so that we weren't there was no question about what to do when we showed up, uh, you know. We yeah, had no, it like that, uh, just to the T. <laughs> which is, yeah, I mean, kind of ties into what both of you guys said, just like making sure that you get things right, kind of like that first yeah. time, so that way you don't have to, you know, keep reshooting certain thing, uh, certain yeah. scenes or things like that. And that's an approach I would have never thought to have taken before this, you know. So. Which is cool, because that now something that you can, you know, use in the future for any other projects that, that you work on. Every, I imagine everything's like a learning experience. Every yeah, project, all, they're all so different, and you learn so much from all of them. All right, guys. So, in you know, I figure where it's it's October, we're getting closer to, to Halloween. I figured, you know, in the spirit of Halloween, ask you a couple questions related to to the holiday as well. So, what are some things for both you guys? And we'll start off with you, Maddie. What are some things that you absolutely have to do every Halloween season? Definitely going to Horror Nights, like getting to go through all the mazes. That is on me, mine and Violet's definitely like top of our list for sure. Um, we also do this competition in my house. Uh, a lot of competitions, <laughs> but <laughs> we do this competition where whoever can get the most candy, like at the end of the night, we count out all of the candy. <laughs> my brother Aiden, my twin brother Aiden, he usually wins. He has won most of the years because he decided last year to bring a pillowcase. There and, you, so, you know, he definitely beat us. And in the take one, he takes like four. But we're, I won't call that cheating, I guess, because we've counted him as the winner. But, you know, just like fun things like that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, I actually went uh, last year. I went down to uh, Universal Horror Nights for for the first time ever, and it was so much fun. And I was really disappointed I didn't get to go this year because some of the houses that they had, like Stranger Things, The Exorcist. Yeah, the Stranger Things one was so cool. Like, it's not even some of the time. It's not even that like they scare you. It's just the set. The yeah, set the is set so cool. <laughs> That was probably by far like my favorite set, I'd say, for the mazes. Uh, see, killing me, Maddie. I wish you know, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Wish I could have gone down to, to go see it, but I'm hoping, you know, one of these these other years. What about um what about for you, Kyle? What are some things that you have to to do every Halloween season? Um, you know, my preference is to like watch a different horror movie I love like every night of the month. And as I've gotten older and you know, it's that's gotten harder. But uh Last year and this year, it's been about just going to different horror festivals because there's so many this month. So that's like quickly becoming the the thing to do now for us. Um, and I, I love that. And speaking of horror films for you guys, uh, what are some horror films that have actually scared or creeped each one of you out? Um, and we'll, we'll start with you this time, Kyle. Um. <clears throat> As far as creep out, I think David Cronenberg's The Brood with all those practical effects, you know, it still makes me like cringe uh, every time I see it. And and just the implication of, you know, just, you know, negative things psychologically manifesting themselves into something physical is uh, kind of terrifying. Um, for you, Maddie. <laughs> For me, there's obviously um, horror films that I love, like Scream and It and all those um, movies. But like one that really scared me, I don't know if this is considered a horror film, but I would consider it a horror film. But Jaws, that I has... I consider Jaws a horror film. Oh, yeah. That has scared me the most any <laughs> horror movie that I've watched. And I'm not allowed to watch that many horror movies, obviously. But that has... it. it I had to walk out of the room at times. And I would tell my dad because he's been wanting to show us Jaws for so long. I was like, dad, I can't watch it anymore. Turn it off. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. And I would just talk to myself the entire time. But yeah, that movie definitely 
Uh, it made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up a lot. <laughs> Man, Maddie, you would have you would have not wanted to go on the. Uh, they used to have a Jaws ride at at Universal. You probably wouldn't have wanted to go on that ride then. I know. I heard. I was so <laughs> annoyed that they took that away because oh, I could have never done it then. So, but <laughs> it would have been so fun. <laughs> Amazing time. Uh. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. I'll say. No, it's too bad that they got rid of it. Uh, because yeah. I, after well, before we had watched Jaws, my dad would show me the clips of people on the ride like at universal yeah like, oh that looks so fun but so scary <laughs> i'm good with the universal tram getting to see it from far away you know yep. just the animatronic um shark and everything yeah i know for for i mean when i saw that movie too i think for like the first time it definitely it made me i mean Actually, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm still a little nervous when it comes to going in the water. I usually don't go like higher than my waist. I'm like, yeah, yeah no, it's always I'm it's good. just there. It's in the back of my head. And I'm thinking about it the entire time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm right there with you uh, there, Maddie. And as far as um, I know, like one for me that ever since and I probably saw it when I was way too young, but uh, Pet Cemetery, the original version that came out uh, 80, 89, like 90, right around there. That movie has just, even as an adult, like it still creeps me out. So it's like, that's probably one of the creepiest movies for me. Yeah. Some movies that. Yeah. Stuff. That movie, I think, traumatized me because I saw it too young as well. Uh, yeah. The, well, the what's sister the right character, uh, she <laughs> like haunted me for weeks after seeing that. <laughs> yeah. You said, what's, what's the right age uh, to see it, Maddie? <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, I don't, I don't know. Well, do you, do you have a suggestion, Kyle? Like one? Um, yeah, you're old enough to watch it, but it's still going to scare you to yeah, death. Yeah, it's still going to scare you. No, maybe yeah. I'll wait a little longer. <laughs> it, a little. It, it's creepy for sure. And I, I prefer like the uh, the original version. And um, what are some uh, some of your guys' favorite Halloween candies? And uh, we'll, we'll start with you this time, Maddie. Um, I would definitely say Twix because I'm not even, I don't even like chocolate that much. But Twix is just so good. And then I don't remember what they're called, but I think they're called bomb pops, maybe. Like those lollipops, the big lollipops, like the Tootsie Rolls in them or like oh, the gum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because I don't know, sugar, it kind of makes my, like, I don't like the feeling of my, my stomach hurting afterwards. So I don't know. I'd say maybe those two candies because they don't like, they don't make me feel sick after. Yeah, no, I, that that makes sense. What about for you, Kyle? Um, You know, I've always been a Reese's guy. Uh classic yes <clears throat> it's just the only way for me uh, my family are huge like oh we literally have a jar over there <laughs> with them and Reese's yeah. <laughs> yeah I feel like Re Reese's is such a, a classic candy you got to have those I would yeah. say that's for Reese's for me but I also like um Skittles and I like Starburst as well Skittles. <laughs> you still uh, you said you used yeah. to love Skittles Skittles was definitely up there I don't know I just stopped I stopped it was not the first thing I grabbed anymore, I guess. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. But still love them. They're still so good. Yeah, you, you just got to get some more for this this Halloween season then, I guess. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, just to, to wrap things up for you guys, you know, again, I just want to say uh, congratulations, you know, to both of you on the film. Um, it's making its ways through the festivals. Is there anything else you'd like to say about your experience working on the film and just the experience of, you know, going to the, the festivals so far? I don't know. It's been such a fun experience all around. I loved getting to work with everyone on the project and I'm excited for more people to watch it. Um, I mean, I think it's just the biggest joy and like privilege in the world to get to direct a movie because, you know, just having so many people come together to, you know, help you execute this vision uh, is one of the best feelings in the world. And then getting to see it with, you know, different crowds outside of your little dark room that you've spent months on cutting it is a pretty like euphoric experience. Uh, um <clears throat> Oh yeah, I imagine that's probably one of the best feelings just in general when when making, you know, projects whether it's film or TV just getting to see the reaction uh, from people seeing the that part. the first yeah. time. Yeah, it's such a great thing. Well, hey, again, uh so thank you guys, you know, so much for your time. Uh congratulations. And actually, uh Kyle, when uh cuz I know it's doing its festival run, when will um will it be like available? I guess like do you have an idea of like a, a wider release for people to be able to check it out? Um Typically with these little movies, they'll do like they'll spend almost a year on the festival circuit. So it'll be like the end of late summer at the earliest, I think, to early fall. 
Okay, excellent. And and hopefully, you know, like I said, hopefully we get to see more of this world in the in the you know near future as well. And until then, you know, I'm going to try to send it out to as many places as I can. And some of the big horror conventions that a lot of fans go to, you know, like Horror Hound or Comic Con, even have small film festival wings. I guess you could say yeah. we're definitely sending it to those. So. Perfect. Yeah. So hopefully, everyone, you know, hopefully it's at least appearing somewhere near where everyone can, you know, check it out soon. Because I'm right. not kidding, you guys. I I loved it. I've, I've watched it twice already. I'm probably gonna, you know, watch it again soon. And I, I think that if you're you're a horror fan, um, you know, just a fan of general uh, good movies in general, I think people are really gonna like this one. Thank Great. you. <laughs> you're welcome. So yeah, thank you guys again so much, both you know Maddie and Kyle. Thank you guys for taking time out of your schedule and and coming on the show. Uh, it was great talking to both of you guys. It was great talking to you too. Thank you so much. <laughs>